right, we're back and everything is new. New year? Yep, new set. New video game? Yep, and uh, is there anything else new? Something else that you see that's new that maybe um, we should mention? No, I don't see anything. That's it. Uh, Tina, don't you see anything else that's oh new? Oh my god, you got your hair done. It's burgundy and it's spray. It's I did see it. Today on G4 TV, it's the Clash of the Titans. Half-Life 2 versus Halo 2, then it's slaughtering in Resident Evil 4. Yeah, but screw that crap, because we got Lauren Lanning toting Oddworld Strange's wrath, and he brought some Oddworld bling. Next on G4 TV. G4 TV, the show that gives gamers a voice. Now, Tina and I want you to meet the final piece to our little gaming puzzle, our new co-host, Jeff Keighley. Finally well, get an Jeff Keighley. We're so yes. excited to have you. Absolutely. You Seriously, now, anyone who watches G4 knows Electric Player Gun. You've been a host of that. We're big fans of the show. Actually, he's got Thanks, Entertainment Jeff. Weekly, GameSpot. He's one of the first guests on G4TV.com. That was fun. And Jeff, named one of the top 30 business journalists in the world under 30 by NewsBios.com, just like you and I were. Just like us. Remember? That was great. It was a great team of that. Honestly, think, honestly, so we're so happy to have you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, As support, this being, so. you know, your very first episode, we thought we'd pop your cherry a little bit and okay. celebrate yeah, yeah. with some champagne. Hey, you have right. a little bit of champagne. Yeah, so great. Just get a so, glass. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 You guys already drinking? Or? All right. Wow. Yeah, well, you guys, not only is Jeff right. new, you know we Good drank sport. it. Tina, I thought you took the last sip. I did. I'm just going to get the shards off of you. Wow, yeah. I just, that I was, not only is that Jeff new. That tasted good. That had, that had a bit of a punch to it. Was that good? Yeah. A bit of a punch. There you go. Okay. okay. You go. All right, people, let's look at this set over here. I'm here at the hub of interactivity. We're going to be taking your calls. We're going to be chatting you up, checking the message boards, all right here from G4 TV's new mothership. It's awesome, and it's good times ahead, don't you think? Yes. It looks good. Well, anyways, guys, let's get we should get the show started. So let's, let's do kick it. it off with a debate for the new season, Ooh. and it's a controversial one about two games, Half-Life 2 or Halo 2. Which is the better game? Now, even though the games are on different systems, Halo's on the Xbox and Half-Life's on the PC, that hasn't stopped fans from arguing over the relative merits of each of these sci-fi first-person shooters. But I've got to be honest, I don't think there's much of a debate, guys. Right. To me, Half-Life yeah. 2 is by far the better game. Half-Life I mean, It's got 2. more innovative, it's got you know, better gameplay, better physics. What better do you guys weapons. Think? Yeah, yeah, I think I te technologically it's a phenomenal game, probably the greatest game ever made. But let's mm -hmm. talk a little bit about multiplayer. Let's talk a little bit about X. You cannot discount the resources and the replayability that, uh, that Halo 2 brings to the table. You just can't. Absolutely. Yeah. And the multiplayer Absolutely. aspect is huge. I mean, obviously, yeah, they're both like, you know, shooters. One's on the PC, one's on the Xbox. Right. I, I do agree with you, but I do think there is a bit of an argument about it. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think, you know, Half-Life's got the Counter-Strike, which a lot of people, right. you know, forget sure. about. And it's a great the multiplayer, multiplayer shooter. Sure. And I just think the Half-Life single-player campaign was so much better than Halo, but they're both, you know, two of the best games But I know you've year. only played There's that once. That. Let's get to Andrew yeah, Croft. He's from La Cañada, California. Hey, Andrew, how are you? Hey, how you doing? Good. Let's talk Half-Life 2 versus Halo 2. What are your thoughts? All right. Well, um, I thought in Halo 2, the single-player, the campaign just felt kind of more epic. You know, it felt yeah. larger, like on a galactic scale. Whatever you do affects, you know, everyone else in the whole, you know, gal Galaxy. And, mm -hmm. and that's interesting that you brought up the Halo 2 single player when you were just talking about, you know, you sort of discounted that a little bit. Yeah, I thought it was good, but I mean, Andrew, did you really, did you feel it was particularly innovative? I mean, was there something that they did in that game that you hadn't really seen in other games out there yet? Um, well, I think uh, Half-Life 2 definitely had the better single player. Okay. But, um, yeah, but uh, the, like the, the best thing I think about Halo 2 is, you know, just the multiplayer just yeah. It, blo it blows everything else away, in my opinion. The G multiplayer yeah. is a huge and it, aspect. That is, I think, in a lot of reviews, that's the dominating force. Dominating force is why Halo 2 is coming out on top, because it's just undeniably good times. Right. Andrew, do you yeah. play any other PC games, or are you just more of an Xbox player in general? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm more of a console player or in uh, general, but I do play you know, the best PC games that come out that, that I hear right? about. That's one of the yeah. challenges, I think, is Absolutely. a lot of people, you know, Halo, they love it on Xbox, but they're not even exposed sometimes to the PC games, which are normally where, you know, first-person first shooters First-person shooters, are the best. shooters need to be played with a keyboard and a mouse. If you want to get the exact, you know, pinpointing of your precision. gun, the precision, sure. and, and, and the larger detail on your computer monitor, it just makes for a better first-person shooter gameplay experience. Absolutely. Yep. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate it. Now we've got Mike McCormick from Cincinnati, Ohio. All right, Mike, Half-Life 2 versus Halo 2. What are your thoughts? I'm, I'm calling mainly for uh, Halo 2. I, I think it's far superior than Half-Life 2. Wow. And you think wow. graphically wow. and everything? And you just... played through both? You played through well, both well, against? Well, 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 graphically and all that stuff, I'm not going to measure the two between that. So but, I, think, I think you're just talking about the game that you're having more fun with. You consider that the better game? Well, exactly. I, if, for me, personally, I go for a fast-paced game. And overall, Halo 2, from beginning to end, it kept me on the edge. I mean, wondering how big or how tough the next round of enemies were going to be. 
And what was your feeling when you finished Half Life? I mean, did you say this game was it was all right or no? It was good? No, this game was great. I mean, okay, there, great. there's no question about it. They're both phenomenal games. Yeah. I agree. I mean, it, you're comparing two gems. There is. It's like that's true. Half Life. Like that. Yeah, Half Life Two justified. Every puzzle, every time you figured out so, what you're gonna do, you went. That was that a, makes sense. No, that was the selling point for me. The puzzles. I'm like, oh, and then you just feel so rewarded, like you, you know, just dominated the world, and I loved it. All right, well, this show's about you guys. Let's take a look at the poll results from the G4TV.com website. The winner is. Halo 2, 68% wow. of the people think that Halo I'm 2 is I'm absolutely surprised. blown away. I thought it was yeah. going to be a bloodbath in the other direction. Absolutely. Well, yeah, I think surprising. Half-Life 2 is a better made game, but I have more fun with Halo 2. But this do? guy said, it, you know, they're both gems. You're comparing two they're, gems. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're two of the best games of last year. All right, well, there you go. Resident Evil 4, you guys, is out on the stands. So next, next act, we're ripping it up and taking out the chainsaw. You know, will it make the cut? Plus, later in the show, we're bringing in the developer of Oddworld, Stranger's Wrath, Lauren Landing, and he's giving away some special prizes, so stay tuned. Scott with 1T, host of G4TV.com. The question of the age is, why only 1T? All right, I'll tell you. The truth is, my parents couldn't afford the second T. Okay, you feel better now? You happy? Now you have the answer. You can see what's happening in front of the camera. Have you ever wondered what happens behind the scenes? Well, listen to this. You can be a part of the behind the scenes action by training for a career in digital video production. You could have a career as a camera operator in film or video, or become an editor for TV shows, commercials, and movies. Ever dream of training for a career in film or video production? Thanks to Collins College, you can! Call 888-823-0999. That's 888-823-0999. Call now. I have a structured settlement and I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. Long-term payments, but you need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. 877 cash now. It's your money. Use it when you need it. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 cash now. What if I told you there's a quick and easy way to get today's most popular stuff for free? All you need is internet access. Answer a few questions, then tell us where to send your free gift. It's fast, it's easy, and it's real. Thousands of people have already claimed their free gift. I thought it was too good to be true. Then I got my free Xbox. I got a free Xbox for my son. An offer like this doesn't come around every day. Check out the website now and get your free gift. Nowadays, you gotta have plastic. That's where Green Dot comes in. You don't even need a bank account. You can use it anywhere. You can use Visa or MasterCard. You load it so you control it. It's a MasterCard or Visa debit card. No overdraft fees. No penalties. It's easy to get. Easy to use. Stop online. You get all those TV offers. Get cash from ATM. You pay bills over the phone. With my Green Dot card. It's a lot safer than walking around with cash. You lose your card. Green Dot gives you back all the cash you lost. Protects my money. Green Dot prepaid reloadable MasterCard and Visa card. Available at your neighborhood stores. My name is Wilfredo Siliezar. Um, I'm a graduate from ITT Tech. Um, my name is Manuel Salazar. I also went to ITT Tech. We were the first two to actually uh, have a, a degree out of our entire family. I never thought my younger brother would make it this far. It's one of the biggest accomplishments of my life to graduate from school. Everything that he uh, put himself to do, he achieves it. After I saw that he was uh, doing great in his job, uh, making good money. Uh, I saw the need that he needed in education. I was going through some tough uh, times. Yeah, I saw the type of work he was doing. He wasn't happy. Moved him in to my house and uh, within a few weeks he was already started in, in his path uh, to his new career. He started with nothing and now he has everything. I'm proud of you. You know, we'll both take care of my dad. Thank you. You're welcome. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute. Education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052. Welcome. Want to know everything about the survivors of Oceanic Flight 815? 
Check out Boss in 2.0 on G4. The Dharma Initiative is a research group created to screw with people's heads, especially that fat kid. Find out how thanks to G4's unique interactive features. You like the polar bear? That was my idea. Lost in 2.0, coming this September, only on G4. Oh, I'm totally commando hunted this lab coat. Damn, this set looks pretty. And Tina, nice. speaking of pretty, you're pretty. Aww. Jeff, you're pretty. Jeff, you're so wow. pretty. Well, you know Thank what? You Resident Evil 4 is out, and it is pretty. We've all been playing this game, and you guys, it's gorgeous. I remember when the first time I played a Resident Evil game, you know, when the dogs jumped through the window, back on my PS1, and it was awesome. I've been a fan of it since then. I was now, like 96, I yeah, think, right? 96? 98, I think. Or 98. Yeah, you can find it out later. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, whatever it was, it was a while ago, and 11 games later, the yeah. franchise is still alive. But do we care? Do we care about this new game? Of course we care. Man, we do with Resident Evil 4. You know, I think the whole franchise in general, the survival, the survival, survival horror genre, yes. it really brought it into life, you know? Yeah, it, it coined yeah. the phrase. Really, it was the yeah. first of its yeah. kind. And one of the problems with Resident Evil, the, the franchise as a whole, has been that you know it was always stuck in this ride of sort of the same game again and again with the yeah. same mechanics, and the camera didn't really move. It was very static. And this Resident Evil Four is a completely amazing 3D environment, and they mm -hmm. totally sort of they. they birthed new life into the whole franchise. They did, because game. Outbreak was a little shady, a little sketchy. A lot of the Resident Evil a fans little. weren't really happy yeah. with it. The game was terrible. <laughs> I wouldn't say... Y y okay. Yeah. And yeah, it always it had bad, bad voice acting, like we know from your cutscene theater. Yeah. Theater, I, right? I enjoyed Super bad cheesy. voice acting. Right. Well, Jill. <laughs> right. The key. Yeah, but wow. if you think about it, I mean, Resident Evil is such an important force in gaming. We've had comic books, Movies, feature movies, you know. Action uh, figures. Action figures. There was even a really bad play. There's yes. been some novels. Play, wow. There has. I mean, people love this franchise. Well, I think thanks to Resident Evil 4, the franchise is not going to go anywhere. We actually have some people on the phone who want to talk a little bit about it. We got Frank Vitarello. He's from Lindhurst, New Jersey. Hey, Frank, how are you? Hey, Laura. Hey, Tina. Good. What do you think about the whole uh, Resident Evil 4 game? Oh, this is the Resident Evil game that we've been waiting for since, like, Resident Evil 1. And tell right? us why, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. Why... Well, apart from the just amazing graphics, I, I think there's not going to be games in the first wave of next generation systems that look as good as this game. Yeah. Right. But Absolutely. also the fact that Capcom is kind of like tipping their cap to a lot of the great game uh, games of the past like four or five years. It's got cinematics that feel a lot like the quality of uh, the Metal Gear right. series. It's, mm -hmm. right. it's got those interactive action sequences that are kind of like Dragon's Lair or Shenmue. And is there anything that bothers you about it? Like, I, I got a little bit frustrated just because you're used to kind of running and shooting at the same point or straight, right. and you can't yeah. do that in this game. Did that yeah. bother you at all? That's the only thing. With the new over-the-shoulder look, it kind of feels like it wants to play like Max Payne, but it yeah. still moves you ready for like Red Dead and Evil. Right. And what, what about the inventory system? That's another thing that sort of frustrates oh, me. Like, you always have to go to the inventory. Yeah, it's like the old pen and paper Dungeons right. and Dragons type inventory system. But that's, I like that better than the inventory boxes that are like scattered through the levels right. on the older. Right, so out of a 10, what do you give this game? Oh, it's a 10. Wow. It's a 10. It's a true wow. Resident Evil fan. Oh, I think it's a 10 Appreciate for the Resident the Evil franchise. But like you said, there's a couple flaws. I hate having to push out to my menu screen to equip my different yeah. weapon. Just it's, push it's the B button. Yeah, Just exactly. <laughs> All right, well, thank you again, caller. Let's go to Austin Snell. He's from White Lake, Michigan. How you doing, Austin? Hey, good. Great, why don't you, doing? good, we're doing great. Uh, give us some comments on Resident Evil 4. Yeah, um, well, I think this is probably one of the best games I have ever played, but it's probably kind of biased from me. But Do you um, do work on it? Why right. would it be biased? <laughs> but um, I do have some things I didn't like about it. All, All right. right, give us the criticisms here. What are the criticisms? Okay. We talk to trash. Okay, uh, I hated Ashley. She always got in my way. She was so <laughs> bratty and annoying. She kept... Keeps dying and yep. getting captured by Chicks the Chicks do that. It's tough with, but but AI characters and stuff like that. That's a really hard thing to pull off in games. Is when you know you, you have a character following you around and that kind of but, stuff. But now I've read and I cannot confirm nor deny that if you position her and the camera in a certain angle, you can almost see up her dress and she'll yell, "Stop it!" <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like you can like uh, stop her at the top of the ladder. You can climb up and she's and she's like, like, "What are you looking wow. at?" Right. Well, great. Right. I mean, there are definitely exactly. flaws, but to me, one of the coolest things is. You're, you're just kind of waiting for the enemies to kind of back off, and they just keep coming, and they come right up to you. I mean, you get this claustrophobic, really, like, survival, like, this horror feeling. That's like, what you, you can't, you can't get away from them, you know? No, and what done. about the difficulty? That was the other thing that I think a lot of people have been complaining. It's a pretty hard game. Did you finish it? I mean, did you feel it was too difficult? Oh, yeah, I finished it, like, tons of times, but, um... Tons I mean, of times? Wow. It's like 25 well, hours to finish wow. this game or something, so... Well, okay. well um... You know, the very first villagers, they're not that difficult, but they're just there to get you acquainted with the game. 
to sort of get ready. And there's more drama coming, I guess. Yeah, so. yeah. well, thank you for the call. We thank really you. appreciate it. Enjoy the rest of the game. Uh, Tina, you mentioned how it coined yeah. uh, Survival Horror. Were you scared? And that's what yeah. we want to know. Were, were you scared? No. Yeah, I, was I enjoyed scared. every second. And the music of it. and yeah. the sound it does. You know, it does. It has a great Creepy. ambiance. The whole thing put together. I know. So like I let out little yelps. By like far, my favorite Resident Evil game. game. Production yeah. value yeah. is By amazing far. in that game. So there we go. We enjoy it. But you know, if you think Tina is strange, mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys ain't seen nothing yet because we've got Oddworld Strangers Wrath up next with the man who, you know what, refuses my marriage proposals every time I ask. Lauren Lanning. Plus, he's got autographed copies of his artwork book, and we're giving them away to you. Seriously. You're plugged into G4 Rewind, up next portal. The strength to build a better future can be found in the Army. With leadership skills and training in over 150 careers, the Army takes you to your strongest point. And whatever you do after that, in your career or your community, you'll just keep getting stronger. There's strong, and then there's Army strong. See what it's like at GoArmy.com. These New Yorkers know great pasta. It's really good. I love it. But they didn't know it was Tuscany pasta from Pizza Hut. Three pounds of restaurant-quality pasta with breadsticks delivered for just $11.99. Now get pasta from Pizza Hut. Increase power, performance, and gas mileage with Prestone Fuel System Cleaner and save up to $3.96 on a deal. Whatever you're working on, Advance will help you keep the wheels turning. Uh, why are you guys drinking Coke Zero? We're not. We're drinking Coke, buddy. But it says Coke Zero on the bottle. Well, they must have messed up then and put Coke in the wrong bottle. I don't see what you... Okay, eyeball. Why don't you try it for us? Oh, I forgot you can't. You don't have a mouth. No mouth. Well, while we're busy drinking Coke, why don't you go stand in front of a hairdryer or something? Yeah, a hairdryer. What? Real Coke taste. Zero calories. There is a little bit of sibling rivalry there. Only in video game land is when it happens. It's, it's a friendly sibling rivalry. I always knew that he was watching me and n watching what I was doing, so it kind of made me want to be a better person because of it, and that kind of changed the way that I acted, too. Both Jason and I uh, actually took the same uh, ITT Tech uh, classes. Actually, my first class, I walked in, and there was my brother. In reality, I mean, I think since we could bounce the different ideas off of each other, kind of helped the whole situation out. It's been absolutely wonderful watching you blossom into the incredible young men that you are. Wish that I could have had as, as much success as they are having at such a young age. Without the education that I got from ITT Tech, I would definitely not be able to live the lifestyle that both my brother and I are in right now, having great jobs that we're so grateful for. It's just really awesome with our life right now. Definitely good. We are educators helping people build a foundation for the rest of their lives. ITT Technical Institute, education for the future. Call 1-800-372-4052. Orlando, Branson, Las Vegas. Finally, the vacation you've been waiting for at a price you won't believe. Vacation discount leader TV Travel Warehouse has teamed up with hotels in America's top vacation destinations. And now we're releasing incredible three-day, two-night vacation packages direct to the public. Choose from Las Vegas, Orlando, Myrtle Beach, Branson, and more. Your choice, just $39.95. That's right, three days, two nights for only $39.95. Stay right on the Vegas Strip or close to your favorite theme park in Orlando. And if you call right now, we'll include a complete dinner for two, absolutely free. But we're not finished yet. To make this the best vacation deal ever, we'll give you another three-day, two-night bonus vacation. Compliments of TV Travel Warehouse. Call now to take advantage of this special TV offer. For only $39.95, you'll enjoy three days, two nights, in Vegas, Orlando, Branson, or other great destinations. Plus, you'll get dinner for two and a bonus vacation. So call now.
This August, X-Play's Got Game as Adam and Morgan travel the globe bringing you the biggest gaming conventions in the world. You want to see them and we've got them. Starting with G4's fan-favorite award show, g Then on to Germany's Leipzig, Europe's battleground for console domination. And PAX, Washington's huge indie gamer culture party. We just got done playing Metal Gear Solid 4. I gotta say, this is now one of the must-have games. This August, X-Play's Got Game, all month long starting August 7th. Part of G4, stay out of the sun summer. The host I missed the most uh, would definitely be Sarah Lane. Her and Kevin Ferrer had a lot of great chemistry on Attack of the Show, and you never knew what to expect. Welcome back to the interactive talk show all about video games, G4 TV. Now, January is normally a month where there are not many big blockbuster games, but this year we had Resident Evil 4, which we just talked about, mm -hmm. and the fourth game in the Irreverent Oddworld series is also coming out. It's called Oddworld Stranger's Wrath. It's a visually stunning first and third person shooter starring Stranger, a mysterious bounty hunter. But more importantly, it has a great <laughs> sense of humor, and that's what the Oddworld games have always been known for, something that mm -hmm. we really like. But anyways, I want to introduce our guest today, because joining us to talk about all things Oddworld is Lauren Lanning. He's the president of Oddworld Inhabitants. Lauren, welcome to the show, and you're Thank also the you, voice Lauren. of Abe, right? Welcome to the yeah. show, Lauren. <laughs> there you, there's the Abe voice. Now, Lauren, be that. before yeah. we start talking about the game, I want to ask you about the console wars, because a few years you were a really outspoken proponent of Xbox. You got up on stage at E3 saying, you know, <laughs> yeah. I, we can do our games for Xbox, you know, PS2 can't power our games. I remember afterwards, Jason Rubin. I never Rubin, said that. Well, but afterwards, <laughs> Jason Rubin called you guys a lazy developer, I remember, he did. in an he IGN did. article. And now, you know, so a couple years later, we look at, you know, PS2 has been much more successful than Xbox. has been a lot of really innovative games out there. I mean, do you still yeah. agree with what you what you said that Xbox is a better system? Well, there's been a, there's been a lot of uh, and right. there's when you come to technical capabilities, the Xbox is an amazing system. It's a, it's a superior system. We never said that the PS2 won't deliver great games. The argument was about how should development costs fuel or be conducive or counterproducive to building great games. And what we were proponents of is better tools for developers, systems that were more uh, developer friendly so we could build better games right. at cheaper prices. And ultimately that would mean that more gamers got better games right. more frequently and had a wider variety to choose from and developers would stay in business longer. Which is all we Which want. Is why we probably won't I guess. Of course he says. Leave him alone, Jeff. Gosh. Any game right. that has flatulence in it, you know, it's got to come from it's a guy who's sensitive. Right. No, seriously. But let's talk a little bit about Stranger's Wrath. There was a sure. tough time there. I was sweating where, you know, it was going to be published by Microsoft and then EA picked it up. How yeah. bad did it get? Like, how close to being canceled did we come? Did we come? Well, uh, it's, it's a long, it interesting story. It was back and forth you know? for a while. I was like, it's but not going to be canceled. It's not. <laughs> but Oddworld, was, was it ever in jeopardy? I mean, was this... Well, I think, you know, in our entire existence, we're always in jeopardy. You know, <laughs> building That's games... being an independent developer. Us, too. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is actually so, our last show as well, so it's been great knowing you. It's great. And yeah, it's a pleasure. Try. <laughs> but, uh, so, you know, a small developer, it's, a, it's, it's like being a hamster in a, in a field of tigers, you know. Right. You're, you're just waiting to be gobbled up. But uh, the project, it, it was a very innovative project, and it took a long time to really get it running. We built it from scratch. We built all new technology. And in the process, uh, the, you know, the Xbox was originally targeted towards casual gamers. And Microsoft and the market proved that the hardcore gamers were really adapted to it. Mm -hmm. And this caused Microsoft to shift some of their planning reasonably slow. And at the same time, it caused us to rethink some of our planning. And uh, it made sense for the, the separation from Microsoft and the jump to EA made sense. And so far, you know, Microsoft was always a great partner. Well, and right. Microsoft EA's not a, not, a <laughs> no, exactly. <laughs> not a bad partner either. No, exactly. EA's not a bad partner either. Thank God it all no. worked out, like and, seriously. Uh, you know, so uh, the future is, is a really interesting place. And the, at the end of the day, Stranger's Wrath made it out. Yes. yes. And, Absolutely. Uh, but you know, the history of Oddworld, it's always been difficult and it's difficult well, for all the small it's developers. It's all in the name, right? <laughs> but we built something that we're proud of. Good. And the Thank team you. did an amazing job. So, well, we uh, have uh, Tim Donnelly on the phone from Dover, New Hampshire. How you doing, Tim? Um, pretty good. Good. Do you have a question for Lauren? Um, yeah, actually I do. Um, I heard that there's going to be living ammo in this game. Is that correct? Yeah, um, live ammo. That's yeah, right. Yeah, and um, what kind of ammo is it going to be? 
You can shoot lore out of him. <laughs> <laughs> and, and the ammo talks back to you. That's one of my favorite. Oh my God, parts. It's, game, it's, it's really smart ass ammo. You know, yeah. it, we want it. We want. We're always trying to squeeze more character into the experience and and give the gamer more options. So we developed a, a, a concept of all these little critters in the environment, and you hunt all these little critters, and they each have different impact and effects on the rest of the characters in the world that you would use them against. And what the reason we created this is we wanted to bring something new to combat and shooting. And some of the things that you do, you have skunk bombs that make characters throw up, that incapacitate them, spiders that'll tie them up, uh, bees that'll sting them, uh, bats that'll blow them up, bats are like grenades with teeth, and <laughs> fuzzles that are like living land landmines. So put into the game because we're at Odd World, we're trying to bring innovative things that still play really well and try and discover some new territory. Very it's inventive. Awesome. Also. Thanks, Tim. We totally Thank appreciate you. it. Let's talk Thank a little you. bit about the Western theme. How did this sort yeah. of, you guys sitting around a round table and just go, okay, <laughs> there's a lack of Western games. How about Western meets <laughs> Western Odd Western comedies. No yeah, less. exactly. How did that come about? Well, w we wanted a different signature. I mean, the Odd World games are, they take place on such a different universe that sometimes it's hard to communicate. And the, the idea of like displaced people, bounty hunters, you know, murderous outlaws, all of these things really, were, resonated well with the Western idea. And if we place this in a Western world, it would help people to sort of go, oh, I have an idea of what's that about. Like when you sh first saw Abe and you see this blue guy with stitches in his lips and he works at Rupture Farms, you go, right. what, right. what is that? You know, what's going on? <laughs> yeah. and, and, and so we felt if we could put, place it and begin it in a little bit of a familiar universe, then from there on, we'd, we'd escalate it into a more crazy wow. place. Okay. But at least you'd go, oh, I have an idea. It's a bounty hunter in a Western-like right. theme, and yeah. you're hunting outlaws. And, and this looks like a great time. And, it, and, it's yeah. you know, and there's some crazy things happening. Okay. I well, get it. I can't wait. Because personally, you know, Red Dead Revolver didn't do it for me. Dead Man's Hand, not so much. Stranger's <laughs> Wrath. We've been, we've been searching for a good Western. Well, look, Lauren's going to stay and hang out. Because when we come back, Lauren's going to answer some true and false questions. And you're going to have an opportunity to win an Odd World Inhabitants art book created by the very talented staff of Odd World Inhabitants. Mm -hmm. Now, everyone's got their favorite game. You've got their favorite game. I've got a favorite game. Laura has a favorite game. I do. But now let's take a look at anti 7651 Sweetest Five Games. your voice on G4T and here's how you get involved. Head over to our website at g4techtv.com and click on the G4TV want to be a caller form. Post your opinion in the designated thread and we will contact you from there. See, it's pretty painless, so make your voice count. Okay, okay, well Lauren <laughs> has agreed to play a little game with a few lucky callers. Now you guys, we're going to give away this book. Tina, Jeff and I will each read off a little bit of trivia about Lauren and Oddworld and your job on the phone is to decide if it's oddly enough it's true or it's way too odd for this world. Do you get you like that? <laughs> Lauren, are, are you ready? I'm ready. All right. All right, caller, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hey, I'm William from North Carolina. What's Ooh. up, Willie? Okay, oddly true or way too odd? Chris Rock was originally considered to play the voice of one of the furballs in Stranger's Wrath. Oh, man. Um, I'd say oddly true. Oh. Lauren? This is true. Ooh, this is true. You win a book! Yeah! Oh, you really win a book! That. No, Chris Rock, so what, what happened, happened then? What, you ever try to hire Chris Rock? <laughs> <laughs> guy, guy's a fortune. He's, he's got the Oscars today. That's why we got Jeff. That's on. I know, right? Oh, we evil. love you, Jeff. Thank you, guys. All right, let's give away some more stuff. books. All right. Uh, hey, caller. Yeah? Hey, what's your name? Matthew. Where are you calling from, Matthew? Larry, California. All right, fantastic. Now, oddly enough, it's true or too odd to be true or something like that, right? <laughs> Whatever. A Abe has stitches because he has no teeth. Not true. That's, that's correct. Wow. It's not true. What's the real answer? What's the real answer? The real answer is he cried when he was a baby and his mom sewed his lips shut to keep him alive. Wow. Uh, to keep him alive? Yeah, and then it's a longer story as to why. Oh, I yeah. bet, because wow. if he made noise, somebody would come and kill him. And yeah. Yes. You're going to be a good mother. I'm going to break it. Okay. Yeah. Congrats. All right, All right so he wins the book, too. He wins the book, too. Exactly. Oh, All right, left. one more. So <laughs> now here's the next one. Now, caller, you there? Hello. Hi, what's your name? Where are you from? Uh, Terrence Sanchez from San Jose, California. Okay, cool. So here's the uh, true or not. Now, uh, the question <laughs> is, now, what Lauren actually came up with the idea for Abe, because he had a Kermit the Frog doll, and he actually dropped him in a vat of acid when he was younger, and that sort of birthed the idea of this Abe character. So do you think that's oddly true or not? I'll go with true. It's true? Is that true, Lauren? No, it's false. <laughs> no. How did we you come up with that? That's right. We, we it, hooked them. It was the tab of acid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How did you come it up with it? It's all the difference, right? <laughs>
Abe was inspired by third world workers in uh, uh, conditions like Bangladesh shipping companies. Okay. Really? Okay. Oh, well, thank you. You Pretty know, actually, that. you guys were out of time today, but we want to thank all of our callers and, of course, Lauren Lanning. From Odd World Inhabitants, and you know, seriously, my offer for marriage still stands. <laughs> really? Just he said no Why comment. Why you guys love right here? <laughs> call, call. Right anyway, here. we're out of time, so see you next time. Great job, Jeff Keeley. Nice. Fantastic. Thanks, Good to see you guys. Thank you, Great. Lauren. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it so Thanks, much. Lauren. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. 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 There's one show out there that keeps coming up. <laughs> Pearl. Uh, it's good, unclean fun. Eat it! Eat it! The greatest gag reflex competition ever mounted. Don't puke, brother! Don't puke, eat more! It's gastronomic molestation. Uh, it will bring about the imminent destruction of the human race. Uh, Reality TV that's turning heads and stomachs. Uh, Pearl. All new Sunday at 7, only on G4.